Good day, everybody. Today I want to look at solving differential equations, but not in the usual way of starting with a differential equation, then coming up with the two solutions. I'm going to flip that. I'm going to start with two, the two answers, two linearly independent functions, and then come up with the differential equation that has each of those answers as a solution. Uh, note that if we have a second order linear homogeneous differential equation and you have two linearly independent solutions, every other solution is just some linear combination of those two solutions. So we will be completely solving the differential equation that we come up with by coming up with it in reverse. Uh, we're going to use Abel's theorem And Abel's theorem, the, uh, a useful version, states that if y1 and y2 are solutions of the second order linear homogeneous differential equation in standard form, meaning the coefficient of the highest derivative, y double prime is 1, then the Ronskian of the two solutions is just going to be given by some constant times e to the negative antiderivative of p of t dt, where p is the coefficient of y prime. So using this version of Abel's theorem, let's see if we can find the differential equation starting with y1 and y2. Uh, my first example, I want y1 equal t and y2 equals sine of t squared to be the solutions. So uh, if I look at the Ronskian of those two, That's just going to be the determinant of the two functions with their derivative. So that will just be 2t squared cosine of t squared minus sine of t squared. And so by Abel's theorem, that should equal some constant e to the negative antiderivative of p of t dt. So let's divide both sides by c. Now I'll take the natural log of both sides and I'll get the negative antiderivative of p of t dt is equal to the natural log, say of that numerator, minus the natural log of c. And now we'll get p if we just differentiate both sides. So negative p of t, the derivative on the right will be 1 over the argument. Times the derivative of the argument, so that'll be with the product rule here, uh, 4t cosine of t squared minus 4t cubed sine of t squared then the derivative of the sine squared term that will be minus 2t cosine of t squared and of course the derivative of the constant will just be 0 so I'll put it as a placeholder so p of t is going to equal so p of t will equal uh, notice first these two terms combine give me 2t, kind of subtract, but and then when I multiply by the negative I can write it as 4t cubed sine of t squared minus 2t cosine of t squared all over this denominator. So the ODE is, so we want to sub into y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y equals zero and if I put it in you can just put it in directly uh, for simplicity I mean I don't need the differential equation in the standard form so I'm gonna put it in but then also multiply through by the denominator so that will give me uh, 2t squared 
cosine of t squared minus sine of t squared times y double prime plus 4t cubed sine of t squared minus 2t cosine of t squared times y prime and now the denominator times this q well that'll just be a new function I'll just call it r of t we'll solve for r of t and then times y equals zero so now solve for r of t so that uh, y equals y1 which is just t is a solution we could have also chosen y2 y2 is a little more complicated though right so uh, this will imply of course y prime equals 1 and y double prime equals 0 so if I put that in here what I get is 0 plus 4t cubed sine of t squared minus 2t cosine of t squared times uh, 1 and then plus r of t all times t I'll put parentheses here and that should equal 0 so we can solve for r of t alright so solving for r of t will be pretty easy we'll just move these two terms over divide by t and I get r of t is going to be 2 cosine of t squared minus 4t squared sine of t squared All right so just move these two terms over divide by t get that so now our differential equation well we just have to rewrite this now but we know r of t so I'll put that in and we get for our ODE you know that's what I call our differential equation so the ODE is 2t squared cosine of t squared minus sine of t squared times y double prime plus 4t cubed sine of t squared minus 2t cosine of t squared times y prime plus r of t and I'll continue down here so plus 2 cosine of t squared minus 4 t squared sine of t squared all times y equals 0 well let's check I don't really need to check y1, but I'll write it down for a moment anyway. y1 equals t works. And then, of course, y1 prime is 1, y1 double prime is 0, and of course it'll work. I mean, I, that was forced. Uh, so that term's gone. If I have a t here and a 1 there, then 2t minus 2t minus 4t cubed plus 4t cubed. So of course that one works. I mean, that is how we found r of t. Um, but might be a little more to worry about with y2 sine of t squared right so um, I'll just rewrite it so y equal sine of t squared plus y prime is 2t cosine of t squared and y double prime will equal 2 cosine of t squared minus 4t squared sine of t squared barely fit that so let's put this into our differential equation check that it works we get All right, so the coefficient here, 2t squared cosine t squared minus sine of t squared times y double prime, 2 
cosine t squared minus 4t squared sine of t squared. Whew. <clears throat> okay, so we get that coefficient. There's y double prime uh, plus, we'll just stagger it down, coefficient for y prime is 4t cubed sine of t squared, so minus 2t cosine of t squared all times y prime that's 2t cosine of t squared we get plus our r of t that'll just be 2 cosine of t squared minus 4t squared sine of t squared times sine of t squared and then does that equal zero? Question mark. So that's what we're checking. Um, easiest way to check is to group the terms together. First we will have cosine squared of t squared, a couple of those terms. So if we check our like terms, we have 4t squared times cosine squared and minus 4t squared times cosine squared. For sine squared of t squared, we'll have plus 4t squared and minus 4t squared from right here. And then for the mixed terms, sine of t squared, cosine of t squared, What will we have? We'll have minus 2 uh, minus 8t to the fourth. And then from here we'll have plus 8t to the fourth. And plus 2. So as we can see, Everything is zero, so that equals zero. Check. All right, so I did uh, four examples, which I'll show in a bit. But, I mean, it turns out to be probably easier just to do the general case. So let's say in general, we have a y1 and y2. two linearly independent uh, functions. We want to find the differential equation for which each one's a, but well, both will be a solution. Then uh, as before, we'll need the Ronskian. So the Ronskian will be the determinant of the functions with their derivatives. And now by Abel's theorem, that should equal some constant e to the negative antiderivative of p of t dt. So let's divide both sides by c. Take the log of both sides. That will give me the negative antiderivative of p of t dt equals the natural log of the top uh, minus natural log of the bottom. Now we can differentiate both sides. And again I'll get the for the derivative of the log, I'll get one over the argument times the derivative of the argument, and that'll be by the product rule y1 prime y2 prime plus y1 y2 double prime then minus uh, derivative of this will be y2 prime y1 prime plus y2 y1 double prime and now these two terms cancel 
and we have for p of t again multiply by that negative then switch the signs here so we'd have a y2 y1 double prime minus y1 y2 double prime and divided by y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime <clears throat> Uh, note the denominator is the Ronskian and the numerator is actually the negative of the derivative of the Ronskian. If we put this in y double prime plus p of t y prime plus q of t y equals zero, put that in for p, but also let's uh, multiply through by that denominator. So an equivalent second order differential equation will be y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime times y double prime plus y2 y1 double prime minus y1 y2 double prime all times y prime and then plus and then some new function that we'll have to determine r of t times y equals zero So uh, let's sub in y equals y1. So of course, y prime is y1 prime. y double prime is y1 double prime. And find the r for which that'll be a solution. And check and verify that y2 is also a solution. So if I sub this in, what we get y1 y2 prime minus y2 y1 prime y1 double prime plus y2 y1 double prime minus y1 y2 double prime y1 prime plus r of t y1 equals zero let's distribute y1 y2 prime y1 double prime minus y2 y1 prime y1 double prime plus as I multiply I'm going to put these in order of derivative so y2 y1 prime y1 double prime minus y1 y1 prime y2 double prime plus r of t y1 equals zero well the y2 terms cancel this one cancels that. Um, and I just have to move these terms to the right hand side, divide by y1, and we can see we get our r of t is going to be y1 prime y2 double prime minus y2 prime y1 double prime. All right, so move these two terms over to the other side, divide by y1, that's what I get. And so for our ODE, this is what we get. All right, so we gotta sub it all in. No, we don't see it, but you can double check. y1, y2 prime minus y2, y1 prime y double prime plus y2 y1 double prime minus y1 y2 double prime y prime plus y1 y2 double prime whoops y1 prime so plus y1 prime y2 double prime minus y2 prime y1 double prime times y equals zero Well, let's check y2 is a solution. Seems pretty reasonable based on the symmetry we see. But we'll check it anyway. And we know the derivatives. I'll just plug them in here. 
So we get y1, y2 prime minus y2, y1 prime, y2 double prime plus y2, y1 double prime minus y1, y2 double prime, y2 prime plus y1 prime, y2 double prime minus y2 prime, y1 double prime, y2. And then does that equal zero? Sure hope so. Distributing y1, y2 prime, y2 double prime minus y2, y1 prime, y2 double prime plus y2, y2 prime, y1 double prime, oops, minus y1, y2 prime, y2 double prime, plus y2, y1 prime, y2 double prime, minus y2, y2 prime, y1 double prime. Yeesh. All right, so if we follow along here, I got y1, y2 prime, and that'll cancel here with the y2 double prime. Got y2, y1 prime, with the y2 double prime, so these two terms cancel. And then lastly, y2, y2 prime, y1 double prime, these two terms cancel, so yes. Checks out. <clears throat> and so we have our result. Let's take a look at it here. So the uh, result is that if you start with two linearly independent functions that have continuous second order derivatives, then this differential equation uh, will have y1 and y2 as solutions. So for some examples, here's the uh, first one we already went through directly. So there's the uh, differential equation. A few more here. Um, if I start with t cubed and e to the 2t, this differential equation will have these two functions as their solution. If I start with t and e to the negative t squared, this differential equation will have uh, each of these as a solution, which means any other solution is only a combination of these two. Incidentally, um, there was some simplifying. If, if I were to take the Ronsky in, uh, there would be an e to the 2t, but it would be on all three factors there. There was also an extra factor of t on all three, so that got uh, just divided out. Same over here, there'd be a e to the negative t squared common, but that's just, that can be eliminated. Uh, for my last example that I did, before I realized I should just go to the general case, uh, root t, you know, just, uh, tried to get things a little more difficult, and cosine t. And then this would be the differential equation. The uh, again, there was this is sort of a simplified version, um, meaning if I were to use the result, I would have a denominator. But if you clear denominators, this is the differential equation you get. So it's simplified in that way. If I look at the solutions. you know, have the computer verify it for me. I mean, I'll, I'll start. So here's our differential equation. Um, I have a y, dy will stand for y prime, and ddy will stand for y double prime. If I sub in for t squared for y and its derivatives, if I put that in, then of course that's not going to be a solution. All right, so how comes that? But if I plug in t equals 1, I'm sorry, y equals t, so then y prime is 1, y double prime 0, we put that in, and of course that's 0. If 
we put in cosine of t squared, right, this shouldn't work. If I put it in, simplify, you get that. So why this comes out, um, if you were to look at the, uh, instead of canceling, the cosine squared and the sine squared terms didn't cancel, but they had the same coefficient, essentially this. And, well, last thing to check, our sine of t squared. Of course, that works. Again, on some others, um, so for this differential equation, uh, t is also a solution. So y equals t. But e to the negative t squared. So if I put that in, that works. I'll do my root t1 now. So there's the differential equation. Um, so t won't work on this one, right? t, y equals t. <clears throat> put that in for y, y prime, y double prime. Doesn't work. But square root of t, and its derivatives, put that in for y, y prime, y double prime, simplify, it's zero. Sine t won't work, but cosine t will. There we go. And finally, The one with uh, t cubed as a solution and e to the 2t will also be a solution. Now there doesn't seem to be anything wrong with t cubed and e to the 2t. But if we you know look at the Ronskian, which isn't quite that I'll put it on paper, but still we can kind of tell there's going to be trouble at if you divide this out at t equals zero and three halves. So if I look at that, <clears throat> for y1 equals t cubed, y2 equals e to the 2t, Ronskian t cubed e to the 2t 3t squared 2 e to the 2t this will be 2t cubed e to the 2t minus 3t squared e to the 2t or if you factor you say it's e to the 2t times uh, 2t cubed minus 3t squared. This is almost what I had is the y double prime coefficient, but actually there was a t that could also be factored out from all three of the coefficients. But so notice the Ronskian of y1, y2 equals 0 at t equals 0 and t equals 3 halves. So let's see what type of trouble there is. So if y is some combination of y1 and y2 then its derivative will just be 3t squared times c1 plus 2c2 e to the 2t and so if I have y of 0 equals a, y prime at 0 equals b, then what do we get? We get, well, 0, that's gone, so it'll be c2 e to the 0, which is just 1, must equal a. And this will be, well, that will be 0, so 2c2 e to the 0 is 1, it must equal b. So I have two equations, but one unknown, so it is quite likely could be trouble. 
Um, so there's no solution unless uh, B is 2A, in which case um, C2 would then just be A, say. And also note, so at 0, um, C1 can be anything. So C2 equals A, C1 anything. So no solution unless B equals 2A, in, in which case C2 will just be the A and C1 can be anything. Um, and also note, if you have a solution to the right of zero and you reach zero, which is what we're gonna do, I can change the coefficient in front of T cubed, right, so there's the Y, if I change this at zero, I'll still have a continuous function. Its first derivative will be continuous, and so will its second derivative. So I can do anything I want at zero, and the function will still be uh, continuously differentiable. And its second derivative will be continuous as well. So I can't have a unique solution going through zero. But at t equals zero, you can't even make a solution unless you have this condition b equals 2a and then in which case there's not going to be a unique solution. But what about at 3 halves? So if I say y of 3 halves, I'm still just going to use a and b. So if I plug those in here, well what would I have? I would have 27 over 8c1 plus c2 e cubed must equal a. All right, so if I plug 3 halves in here, oops. All right, so if I plug 3 halves in to here, that's what I get. If I plug it into the derivative, then I'll get 9 fourths times 3 it'll be 27 over 4 C2. This will be 2 C2 e cubed must equal b. So at first glance it might look like two equations, two unknowns, but actually in terms of the variables it's really more like parallel lines. If I were to say double this top equation, what do I get? I get 27 over 4 C1 plus 2c2 e cubed equals 2a. So you can see again, these are kind of the same left hand side, so there's no solution unless uh, b equals 2a and then in which case there's infinitely many solutions but they're a little more related Well, I'll go one more. So let's stay away from, so there, there is trouble at zero and three halves. So you can have, at, at three halves, you can only have a solution if this condition is met. And if this condition is met though, it won't be a unique solution because there's infinitely many ways to do the C1 and C2. But let's stay away from those two points. So let's try uh, y of one equals one y prime of 1 equals negative 2. So that implies, keep going into the same, I mean it's all the same right here. So this will be c1 plus c2e squared. So I'll write it c1 times 1 cubed plus c2e to the 2, and that has to equal 1. And here, if I plug in 1, that'll be 3c1 times 1 squared plus 
e to the 2t will be e squared, and I want that to equal negative 2. So now I have two equations, two unknowns. The uh, solution is c1 is negative 4, c2 is 5 over e squared. Went through the math there. So y equals negative 4 t cubed plus 5 over e squared e to the 2t solves 2t squared minus 3t y double prime plus 6 minus 4t squared y prime plus 12t minus 12y equals 0 y of 1 equals 1 y prime of 1 equals negative 2 uh, but we'll say on 0 less than t less than 3 halves So that's the unique solution guaranteed on that interval. If I look at the graph, so here's a maple solving the two equations, getting the result for me. Skip that. And then here's the graph on 0 to 3 halves. Again, it We, uh, but we can ex expand beyond and let's just see what happens so if I go beyond I mean it looks fine it doesn't quite touch the uh, x-axis there so it looks fine but there is trouble at uh, t equals zero. Right, so I can, I can change it to anything. If I make a piecewise defined function, so this function to the right of zero is my solution, but at zero I just drop the t cubed. So for less than zero, drop the t cubed, then um, you know this doesn't affect the function or its first or second derivative so this function is, looks like this it has continuous second derivative if I put the two functions on top of each other they're both solutions to that differential equation y of 1 is 1 y prime of 1 is negative 2 so I don't have a unique solution if I try to go beyond 0 because they'll both solve that second order differential equation. If I try to go to three halves, notice there's the y value at three halves, 1.5. Here's the derivative, which is of course double. That had to be the case. Uh, that was also the case at the origin, by the way. But we didn't check it. Uh, now, the second derivative won't be continuous, but if I uh, if I were to make if, um, initial conditions that match this function, so at one point five. I stipulate the function value in its derivative, then th there's no unique way to do that. Here, it, it matches the function. So both the function in black and in blue have a, that y value about 0 0.09 and derivative about 0 0.18. Uh, but the second derivative doesn't match, so th this function won't be solve the second order differential equation. But if you try to start initial conditions at 1.5, there's infinitely ma many ways to do it. So both of these solve if you start at 1.5 with only the function and its derivative. 
All right. I think we uh, went through a lot today. Now you can go impress your friends by coming up with a crazy differential equation that only you know the solution to. That's what I like to do. All right. Have a good day. Adios.